Hey, what's going on? Shep here at Iron Anchor Cycles, and we are back with another installation in our build video series on our Softail Lowrider S. So if you've been paying attention and following along in the first couple of videos, you'll know that we started off with some pretty small and uh, pretty easy modifications to the bike. Things that weren't maybe our biggest priorities, but based on parts availability, that's what we were able to do. So we started with what we had. I had mentioned a little earlier on that we would be getting into some more substantive and more uh, dramatic uh, upgrades on the bike. And in this video series, we're gonna to start to tackle some of those. As I'm sure most people are aware who are working on bikes here in 2021, parts availability has been a bit of a challenge. So as parts have come in, we've been kind of stashing them away and stockpiling and get ready, getting ready to do some more uh, upgrades as those parts become available. So we've been working on that. And we've got quite a bit of things lined up in the next couple of weeks. We're still waiting on a few little parts to tackle some other projects. But at the moment, uh, one thing we're gonna do today that's really, really easy to do uh, with very little parts in addition to what you know you decide you want to buy, uh, if that makes sense, is doing the rear suspension on this bike. So uh, hopefully you've been able to figure that out based on what's sitting here in front of me. Uh, but that is what we're going to tackle today. We're going to do the monoshock on this uh, Milwaukee 8 Softail. And there are a few options out there uh, for rear suspension for these bikes. And if you, you know, do some YouTube searching or Google or any of those other things, I'm sure you'll find um, as many opinions as you can find people in terms of uh, what works and what's good and, and what people want to do. Uh, but for us today, I'm going to show you the two that I think are the best options for this bike. And we'll talk about maybe a little bit of the pros and cons of each one. And then we'll get into which one of these two we're going to go ahead and use on this bike. So. Uh, without any further ado, let's get started to talk about that. So as we know, uh, Harley Davidson did a really, really good job redesigning the uh, chassis, suspension, and just overall balance and rideability of these bikes compared to their predecessors, whether they be the soft tails or the dynas that came before them. And although they made a lot of improvements, there's still a lot more that we can do. And what I like to talk about in terms of, you know, Harley components is they really don't use premium components in the assembly of their motorcycles. And that's not a knock that has to do with mass production. And what I've said, I think on videos before, I don't know how many times, uh, Harley builds bikes for the 80%. So uh, when we talk about the components that are on here, they're in that 80th percentile of quality that, you know, 80% of people are going to be just fine with it. Uh, but if you want to go that extra mile, no pun intended, uh, getting into some much better premium components is going to give you miles and miles of improvement over what you've got. So that said, it's not that, you know, the components in the front and rear suspension are, are bad. They're just off the shelf, mass produced, high volume production components. And we're going to switch them out for something a little bit more premium that's got more going on and uh, is going to function a whole lot better. And so the two options that we've got for this bike uh, to look at today, um, one is the monoshock from Olean's and the other is the monoshock from uh, RWD. Both of these are really good options, but they do have a couple of uh, fairly large differences, some of which are cosmetic maybe, and others are, are pretty important functionally. So uh, I'm, an, I'm an Olean's person most of the time. Um, I don't know, it's probably one of their banners hiding behind here somewhere. Um, 99% of the time, my recommendation for folks is Olean's is second to none and is really no better than you than you can do uh, than Olean's on your bike. And we're going to use their components for the front suspension when the time comes. We use their components on the rear of just about every other bike that we do uh, for ourselves in the shop. Obviously, for customers, whatever a customer wants, we're happy to put on for them. Um, but really, uh, you really can't beat the quality and precision of an Olean's shock. So why are we standing here with two different options in front of us? Well, let's dig in and take a little bit of a look at that. So let's start with the Olin's shock. Let me move this box out of the way. So we're gonna open this up. And the rear suspensions on these monoshock bikes, very similar to the twin shocks on a Dyna or a Bagger. Once you get access to where you need to, to get your wrenches and, and things in there, these things come on and off really easily. It's no more complicated than it ever was. Just take out the bolts at the top and at the bottom, take the shock out, put the new one in, uh, get your uh, adjustments made and you're good to go. So this is gonna be our mono shock from Olean's. Uh, this is, I think I wanna say the part number on this is a HD 504, yeah, HD 504. And this is a 12 and a half inch mono shock for this bike. Um, it's got a, remote adjuster uh, on the outside for preload. 
and then it's got a little bit of height adjustability down here in the bottom, and then you also have your rebound control here uh, on the uh, underside of the shock. Now, this is gonna install just like the original shock under the seat, and then our adjuster is gonna get mounted with a small bracket, which is included in the hardware packet here. Uh, it's gonna bolt onto your side cover, and your adjuster is gonna live right there. Uh, still wrapped up in foam, but basically it matches the body of the shock in a brushed aluminum finish. And that's gonna go there, and this line will run under the seat pan and up under, and obviously into the top of the shock body. So, this is a really, really great option, and I think for a lot of people, this is the, this is the shock that I would recommend. Um, really depends on what your uh, particular situation is, and we'll talk about that, how it compares to the RWD shock. So, one thing to note, Certain M8 Softails have an external preload adjuster already, some of them don't. In the case of the Lowrider S, it, it doesn't, and that external preload adjuster is on the body of the shock itself. There are other M8 Softails that will have a preload adjuster already out here, and that's going to get replaced with this setup. So, let's put this aside for just a second. We'll talk a little bit about the RWD shock. All right, so a little bit about the RWD shocks. So the RWD shock is a collaboration between uh, Russ Warnmont uh, with Walker Evans Racing. They come together with the suspension components and the assembly and design to provide these shocks. They're really great. I've got a set of them on one of uh, our dynas. We just installed a set uh, that they sent to us on our uh, Dirt Sportster, uh, instead of 15 inches on that one, they're pretty cool. Um, so, this may be a less well-known option, perhaps, than Oleans, which is a global brand and, and does a, a lot of things in a lot of different areas. Um, but there's no uh, sacrifice in terms of quality uh, or the components used here. So, taking a look at this, you'll see that at first glance, uh, you've got a very similar uh, setup and design here, right? So, you have your monoshock that's going to install into your seat. You've got a remote reservoir uh, with a knob on the top of it that's gonna mount externally on the bike. Um, a couple of things that we're gonna point out here, and these are the big differences. Number one, this shock is 13 and a half inches long, which is gonna make it longer than the Olean's shock at its full uh, adjustment on that height adjustability. That Olean's shock has about a half an inch of adjustability in it. Uh, this shock has no adjustability, but is 13 and a half inches, which is gonna raise the rear of this bike about two inches from where it sits in the stock location. So that's number one. Number two is that this uh, reservoir is not gonna sit in the same location. So we talked about how the Olean's reservoir was gonna mount here onto the side cover. This one is actually gonna mount not on this side of the bike, but the other side of the bike. Um, but it's basically gonna go right onto the swing arm. So I don't wanna move the camera and do all of that, but suffice it to say, um, you'll basically be in a situation where that reservoir will sit kind of on your swing arm, something like this. Um, it actually mounts to where the rear belt guard uh, attaches on the other side of the bike, if you can picture that. So those are two differences right there. The third one is the actual design of the shock is a little bit different. So this one, as opposed to using the knob on the reservoir for preload adjustment, this has a more traditional uh, preload adjuster with a collar that actually adjusts the preload on the spring. And you've got your other adjuster here, your rebound control uh, external on the uh, reservoir. Now, for our purposes and this bike, a lot of those things that I just mentioned are things that I think are a benefit for what we're doing here. And so this is the shock that we're gonna go with. I'll talk a little bit about why. So number one, the biggest right off the bat is that extra height. So really like the idea of getting these bikes about as high up in the air as we can get them and still make them manageable. Um, primarily I'll be riding this bike and I'm 6'2", so really height is not a big deal for me. Um, I like the extra height, the extra travel that you get from these shocks. Um, so that's a big one for us. Uh, the next one is preload versus rebound control. Um, you know. The preload is something that we're gonna set and probably leave, and the rebound control is something we may wanna uh, 
have a little bit more flexibility with. So which one of those two things would we want to have controlled externally? Probably the one that we're gonna be adjusting more, which is that rebound. Um, the last, and that's our, this is our second reason. The third one, uh, I almost don't wanna include it on the list of reasons, but it matters a little bit to me and I'm sure it matters a little bit to other people, um, although maybe it shouldn't matter so much, is it's about aesthetics. Um, the Olins is a great shock, but unlike their other shocks for uh, other model bikes, that shock doesn't come in another color, and it's just that polished silver color, whereas uh, this one's black. And obviously what we've got going on here with this bike, um, adding some polished aluminum doesn't really go with the, with the aesthetic of what we're building, um, versus the RWD, which, you know, in a, in a black finish, matches a little bit better. So uh, that's something, like I said, it's not nearly as much of a priority as those first two things I mentioned in terms of the adjustability and the height, um, but it's a thing, so I decided to mention it. So uh, without any further ado then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna get set here, we're gonna start pulling some stuff out of the way, we'll get into installing this, and uh, we'll check in and I'll give you a sense of kind of how this goes in and, and what's involved with it, so uh, stay tuned. All right, so here we are with our seat removed as well as a couple of other pieces. We're just about ready to get this shock out. Just wanted to just show you what's involved here. So like I said, obviously seat came off. There is also a uh, cross member right here that lives in this area. Uh, you're just gonna go ahead, a couple of bolts, take that out. Uh, real simple. On the front side of the shock, you can't see it from this camera angle, um, but there's just a very, very easily accessible bolt that uh, from the other side of the bike, the right side of the bike, runs through it, so you'll just pull that out. The rear is where it may be just a touch complicated um, if you, if you uh, aren't sure how to do it. So right in here, you can see this is the bolt that holds the rear shock onto the swing arm. What is on top of this bolt is a, another bolt that is clamping down on top of this bolt. So you need to loosen this before you can remove this. Now, this is not a big deal. Um, the, just the question you get sometimes is, does the fender need to come off in order to get a wrench onto this bolt? The answer is, it might, it might not. Um, even if you look at the service manual, it says, remove the rear fender if you need to remove the rear fender, <laughs> which uh, is not super helpful, I suppose. But um, what I'll tell you is, in the case of this bike, no, the rear fender doesn't need to come off. Um, without any specialty tools, you know, like us, you know, no reduced reach socket or anything like that, it's literally just a quarter inch uh, Allen key. And that will get in here and onto this. And with just enough room to clear under the fender, uh, without touching it or scratching it. So what you're gonna wanna do is just be really careful and don't scratch your fender. If for whatever reason you can't get a wrench in there, uh, it's really not the end, the end of the world, um, just take your rear fender off. It's four bolts, two on each side, and this whole assembly will come off. Um, and if you remember what we did in a previous video where we modified our lighting and we made sure to put a whole bunch of uh, quick disconnects in here to make it so that this uh, fender harness was still modular, that's the reason. So that if you do need to take that rear fender section off, it's just unplug the wiring plugs, four bolts on each side, boom, take it off. So like I said, in our case, we don't need to, uh, so we're gonna leave it in place. Um, but this is where we're at in terms of the disassembly. So now what I'm gonna do is just go through and remove our front bolt. I've already loosened up this pinch bolt and then we'll remove the rear bolt and then we'll pull the shock out. Um, and I mentioned this before, here is the adjuster uh, for, the, for the factory shock. So, you know, like I said, on some bikes, this would live outside um, like a fat bob, something like that. On this one, it's just uh, bolted onto that cross member that we took out. So while we do the removal, we're just gonna lay this aside and it'll come out uh, when we take the shock out. So that's where we're at and uh, we'll check back in when we're uh, starting to get to the next step. Okay, so our new shock is installed now. We've got a couple little steps left to do to get this fully buttoned up, but wanted to just take a pause here so I could show you what we've got. Uh, this is what I was explaining before um, about how the reservoir is gonna mount onto um, your swing arm as opposed to on the side cover, as we mentioned on the Olean's shock. Um, I think this has a really nice clean look to it. The black anno matches the frame. You've got the nice uh, braided stainless line that runs right in uh, under your fender to get back to the shock. Um, just a really clean, really clean install. Um, the only thing, other thing worth pointing out here that was not a big deal for us, but is worth considering if you're thinking about these different shocks, um, this does, uh, require you as it comes to remove the rear belt guard. Um, 
it's not to say you couldn't get it back on. It would be pretty easy to just get a longer bolt here and either get or make a spacer for this bracket just to offset it from the belt guard a little bit and you'd be able to run both. Um, to be honest, I don't really know why they don't just do it that way uh, from the, the factory, why RWD doesn't just offset this bracket a little bit so you can leave the belt guard on um, and just give you the longer bolt. But nevertheless, it's great how it is. I'm not super concerned about that belt guard. We may be changing to a chain on this bike uh, down the road anyway. So not, not super a big deal for us either way. Um, Got our, our shock installed here. Uh, the cross member I mentioned is back in. Uh, it's loose at the moment still, just because uh, it's a little easier to get the wrench in to do the preload adjustment and set the sag with this bracket out versus in. So um, we'll take that out to do that preload adjustment when the time comes. Uh, for the moment, we're just gonna leave it alone. Um, the bolts go back in uh, for the mounting bolts, the reverse order of how they came out. So you start with your swing arm bolt, put that in, torque it to spec, which is about 85 foot pounds, um, I'm sorry, 75 foot pounds on this one, um, and then uh, retighten the uh, set screw, uh, 15 to 20 foot pounds, and then you're gonna come up and using the jack to adjust the height of the bike to get the holes to line up, you'll install the frame side bolt, and that one will get torqued to 85 foot pounds, uh, roughly. I think the specs are like 80 to 90 and maybe 70 to 75, something like that, but we do uh, 85 here, 75 on the back. Um, so that's basically it for the install. I don't think there's anything else here that I need to point out. Um, of course, if you've got any questions on any of this, uh, feel free to let us know. Um, but for the moment, this is going to uh, wrap up the install here. So we'll get the bike back buttoned up and uh, we'll just check back in before we uh, move on to the next thing. All right, so that is mostly gonna wrap up our install of the RWD RS1 Monoshock for our Lowrider S here. So one other thing, uh, obviously you can see we've got the mufflers removed on the bike now, which we didn't before. Um, so one other thing I wanted to point out, which I neglected to mention on the other side of the bike is since the ride height of the bike has changed fairly dramatically, um, hopefully you can see there's a much bigger uh, fender gap here than there was before. Um, because of that change in ride height, you are gonna most likely need to adjust your rear belt tension. Uh, so ours was pretty loose when we got done with this, um, which kind of makes sense given the new geometry. Um, so depending on your bike, you may or may not need to remove one or both mufflers to get access to both your axle nut and then also uh, the adjusters. In our case on the Lowrider S, just taking off the bottom muffler gets you access to the axle nut, but in order to get access to the adjuster bolt, uh, the top muffler's gotta come off too, which is no big deal, particularly on a new bike. It's a few bolts, they just slide right off. So. Um, that's gonna be it. We've got our tension uh, readjusted. We just gotta put our mufflers back on and we'll be good to go. Um, the last thing on this is gonna be adjusting the sag. And basically what you're gonna do is measure from, just find a fixed point uh, here, somewhere directly above your rear axle, um, either the bottom of the fender, the fender strut, top or bottom, whatever you wanna pick. Um, and you're gonna measure with the bike uh, unloaded but sitting on the suspension. You're gonna measure from here down to the center of the axle and you're gonna take that measurement and then you're gonna get on the bike um, in whatever your normal riding situation is, one up, two up with gear, whatever that is, um, and then take a new measurement and you're looking for about one inch of sag on this particular shock. So um, that will do uh, when I've got somebody else here who can take a measurement for me, um, we'll do that together with a second set of hands. But for the time being, we're gonna call this good to go and uh, hopefully you found this informative. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to reach out. Hopefully. Uh, it's pretty clear that this, this particular project we did today is something you can definitely do with basic tools um, at home. Um, you know, as long as you've got something to uh, raise the rear of the bike up um, and you've got basic hand tools, you can really get this done. So um, that's it for now. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you wanna stay tuned for more uh, videos in this series. We'll have some more coming for sure. Um, so that's gonna be it. Take it easy.